fluid mechanics can seem intimidating sometimes a lot of complicated terms can jump out of books and academic papers and the mathematics describing phenomena like turbulence heat transfer vorticity all seem very involved but wait it doesn't have to be that way hey everyone i'm nikhilesh and i'm kushal we're, we're the two, two brock scientists now let's get started fluid mechanics involves a lot of parameters So let's think about some of the parameters that affect fluid flow. We have viscous effects, heating of the fluid, temperature of the fluid, density changes, velocity and pressure of the fluid and forces like gravity which act on the fluid. So from an engineering standpoint, problem solving involves making a lot of assumptions and simplifying the problem as much as we can. So now let's try to remove the complicated terms from this list of parameters. Now we are left with a basic flow. In its most basic form What do we envision fluid flow as? Let's consider a fluid flowing from left to right. Now imagine a fountain suddenly springing up from the ground, otherwise known as a source of fluid. When you superimpose the uniform flow and the source flow, you see that the fluid particles are already adjusting their course. Now, let's add a drain in the ground, otherwise known as a sink. Something incredible happens before our very eyes. What was a normal fluid flow now suddenly takes a somewhat complicated shape. The source, sink and uniform flow are what we call as elementary flows. There is another flow called vortex flow which as you can imagine is particles rotating about a point and is an important elementary flow especially while describing lifting surfaces like airfoils. All these elementary flows are part of a branch of fluid mechanics called potential flows. Mathematically potential flows are described using the famous Laplace equation. The most powerful advantage of the Laplace equation is the ability to add solutions of the equations linearly together. This property enables us to model flows around relatively complex geometries with ease. For example, consider the individual mathematical expressions that describe all the elementary flows. To get the resultant mathematical expression for the source and sink in combination with a uniform flow, All you have to do is add the terms together. A quick look at the resulting streamlines reveals a flow around an elliptical body. For a more detailed explanation of the relatively simple mathematics behind potential flow theory, we refer you to the link in the description. Potential flows are one of the most powerful tools in fluid mechanics. Although they represent an idealized version of fluid flow, they give detailed insights into the flow patterns that we can expect around a body. Otherwise we would have had to resort to time consuming calculations like computational fluid dynamics or experiments. To show how powerful this tool can be, consider the flow around an airfoil. Consider a uniform flow superimposed on a line of vortices called a vortex sheet. By using this combination along with a condition called Kutta condition, we can simulate the exact flow around an airfoil. Potential flow finds its application in many problems. Take for example lifting line theory which is a tool used for estimating lift distribution over a three dimensional wing using this theory we can approximate the complex flow in the wake of a rotating wind turbine we had asked you a couple of questions in our previous video one of them was related to potential flow around a cylinder the question was even though the particles sat at the same vertical line they didn't maintain it as they flowed over the cylinder We now want to explain how this happens physically. Now let us consider a group of particles flowing towards the cylinder. Because the fluid is a continuum, these particles receive information from the particles ahead of it. Because of which these particles get squished and they slow down. This squishing now leads to a formation of a high pressure region in front of the cylinder. Now as the fluid flows over the cylinder and because of the increasingly confined spaces, it gets pushed by the particles behind it and accelerates. Now Remember the fluid is a continuum so how much ever the particles want to move away from the surface it gets restricted by the particles above it and the flow gets flow stays attached to the cylinder so another physical way of looking at this problem is to consider the particle going in a circular trajectory we know that if a particle goes in a circular trajectory it has to experience a centripetal force in this fluid uh, in this fluid flow this centripetal force is enacted as the pressure gradient as you can clearly see in the graphic Uh, mathematically there is an equation called the bernoulli equation in the normal direction to the streamline that describes this flow uh, if you observe you see that this this equation is very similar to the uh, uh, equation for centripetal force acting on a particle 
Now that we've explained how the fluid particle flows around the body, we substantiate this by showing you the velocity plot of the fluid around the body. If you look at the velocity plot, you see that the particle closest to the uh, cylinder slows down the most and then accelerates the fastest over the cylinder. So another question we asked you in the last video was the limit at which continuum mechanic hypothesis still holds. This limit is represented by a non-dimensional number known as the Knudsen number. Knudsen number is the ratio of the mean free path of a particle with the char characteristic length scale of a flow field. If this number lies less than 0.1, then we consider continuum hypothesis to still be valid. Thanks for watching the video. Uh, please stay tuned for our next videos. And if you have any suggestions, don't forget to leave a comment below. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Bye! No, buy us too long. What are you doing, Kushal? I'm trying to figure out how this works. Interesting. Start. Hey everyone, I'm Nikhilesh. And I'm Kushal. We're the two broke scientists. <laughs> <laughs> and we're and the, the two, two broke, broke scientists. scientists. Now, let's, let's get, get started. started. I said now too early. <laughs> two thousand years later. We're, we're the, the two broke, broke scientists. scientists. Now, let's get started. Let's do it again. Why are you going to stop? This is actually a non dimensional number known as the Nusten number. Nusten, I think. Kushal, what are those? <laughs> hmm. Thanks for watching the video. We hope you liked it. <laughs> <laughs>